Hi, this is the Social Jello with Angelo show. My name's Angelo. I'm a social scientist, surfer, martial artist, and a whole lot of other things. Coming to you live from Kasai City, Japan, the Social Jello with Angelo show. What's up, and welcome to Social Jello with Angelo podcast. This is part of my series on the Kaja Kimball methods. Originally, this started because one of my viewers asked me what's the difference between the Kaja Kimball methods and which one's most effective for self defense. I've been avoiding that second part because I love all my Kaja Kimball Ohana, and I personally believe that Kaja Kimball is awesome for self defense, regardless of the method you come from. That's up to you. Now, before we get started, I'm here with my guest, David Taveras. David Taveras is the author of Black Robe. It's a great book. You should check it out. You can pick it up on Amazon. And today's episode is all about Godin method. Now, did I say that right? Godin or is it Godin? Godin, Godin, Godin. 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 Okay, good. I said it right. So, David, let's just start from what I do know, and then maybe you can help me clarify what I don't know. Um, what I do know is that Godin is on the very top. If you look at the Kaja Kembo tree, um, there's like a box of OGs that all come from Hawaii, and Godin is on there. I also know that you can follow that branch from Godin over to my good friend, John Hackleman, who is Chuck Liddell's coach. And, you know, Hackleman talks a lot about how he trained with Godin, but he mentions to me, he didn't really come until way later. And he doesn't know much of the history, which is why I have you on the show. Cause we, I, I, well, I'm curious myself about the history of that lineage. So we'll just start off with this. Who did Godin train under? Uh, John Parado. Okay, cool. So you turn to Joe Imperato, and what's our timeline here? What year is this? 1952. He was 15 years old at the time. Okay, so 1952, he's training with Joe Imperato. All right, and um, from there, what happens next? He trains with Joe for how long? Uh, up until 1958, and then um, in 1959, uh, excuse me, 1960, he was asked, he, he was... Uh, he was asked to leave the Kaja Gamble system, and uh, um, in 1960, Sonny Gascon, Uncle Sonny Gascon, went up to uh, the mainland, and uh, he started a Kaja Gamble school, and then uh, Professor Goudin went up there to go help him start it up, and um, when he got up there, I, I'm not sure how long the school was running, but uh, they, were, uh, they were told not to use the... Uh, the, the system uh, Kaju Gamble, the name, the self-defense system. So they changed it to a uh, car example, which means empty, uh, empty mind. Okay? Now the difference between the car example and the Kaju Gamble, the, the curriculum is still the same. You know, it's just a difference in the name. And then once the school started, uh, uh, got established, you know, a year later in 1961, Professor Goudini came back to Hawaii and uh, he opened up uh, uh, his Kama Key branch in 1961. It was right on Wailai Avenue, and um, he gave he gave the the car example of the son. He handed it over to him, and then he went under uh, Kempo Karate. But it, first, he asked uh, Professor Chow. He just made sure that it was okay for Professor Chow if he could go back to the Kempo system under his original um, instructor's uh, uh, style. And, and then, then uh, so let's but, go back a little more then, and because Chow. William Chow's a, a funny cat because, like, he's on the tree. Who is William Chow? Is that right, William? Is that, did I get that yeah. name right? No, he, he was from the from the beginning. He was, there was a uh, he was under uh, Thomas Young. I mean, excuse me, not Thomas Young, but uh, uh, Professor Mitosi, and they had Thomas Young there. They had uh, Paul Yamaguchi. They had some other guys that were training with uh, Mitosi. And then uh, Professor Chow, he went on his own. Okay. And uh, he, the, Mitosi was Kempo Jiu-Jitsu. And then uh, Professor Chow, he separated himself from uh, uh, Professor Mitosi. And he called his uh, system uh, Kempo Karate. Later on, he called it Chinese Kempo. All right. And then later he called it Karaho. I, I don't know how he got Karaho. Yeah, it's OK. It's OK. We're, we're focusing on, on, All right, correct, on, right, on, on Godin anyway. Right, but I'm right. just curious, because you're saying, so. So he so it's so Godin went back to Chow. So after he separated away from the Kajikumbo branch, um, and if anybody wants to know more, I do recommend you pick up David's book. It goes into great deal detail on that. When he does do that, 
And he goes and he says he starts doing Karazempo. Was Chow there the whole time? What's our timeline to when he goes No, back? Professor oh. Professor Chow stayed in the stayed on the island. Professor Gooding went went to the mainland. That's where they created that that the Karazempo. Oh when he okay. came, no, when he came back, he gave the whole Karazempo to Sonny Ga Uncle Sonny Gaston, okay, Professor Sonny Gaston. Mm -hmm. So instead of using the name Karazempo here in Hawaii, he just went he, he told Professor Chow that he was gonna use the word uh the self-defense system, Kempo, Kempo Karate, okay? So when he opened the, the school in uh, uh, Kanamaki, it was called Kempo Karate. And then uh, in 1973, they changed it to uh, Chinese Kempo. But another thing that, that Hackleman will tell you is when, they, when we first started out as Kempo Karate, it, it was Kempo with the N. And then in 73, we had the child, Professor Chow asked Professor Goyin to change it to the M, okay? He wasn't really directly under Professor Chow, but, you know, he was just, he just explained, you know, he was asking for his blessing, can I use Kempo as my self-defense system? Because he explained the situation that he was in and everything. So that's how he went back. That's how he got, is recognized as a, as a, as a Kempo man. So when he does make a split, when he, when he does go train on his own, at that yeah. point in time, he's not under anybody. He's his curriculum. Right. What kind of right. curriculum? He's teaching all this stuff Joe taught him, or what's he teaching at this point? Well, he's. I'm not sure what it was. Was that what he was learning from Joe? But what we were doing, we had the what they called the uh, the grab arts uh, before the when I was when I first started out the grab arts. He didn't have any tape down, and then later on he changed it to. Uh, it was called uh, grab combinations, and the reason why it's called combinations because it's a combination of a, a of a counter with the takedown, and then the you know the ground and pound. And the only time that, that at that time that they had the the, the takedown was with the, what they called the advanced combinations. That was against a punch. You know, you get away from the punch, and then you took him down, and you know. But that's uh, whether you know he he modified what Joe had taught him, or 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 he was going by what Joe did. That I don't know, but um, there is some katas and stuff that that we did that I've never seen. You know, the other cause you guys did. You know, these things called movement exercise, what you guys call pinyons. The pinyons that we did was um, it was it was more like Japanese influence. You know, we had one through five, and then you, what you guys call the alphabets, or or I, I'm not sure, but we, we called it kempo katas. Okay, so that's what we were learning. Okay, and in '73, what, what Professor Gugin did was uh, he started going more into the the full contact. He started this, having to us practice the the boxer style instead of instead of just the traditional from here. We were, we we're up here and we we're we we're throwing like uh, uppercuts and hooks in, in in tournaments and stuff. And it was gonna go well, you know, the karate congress and stuff. But yeah, yeah. So if I understand you correctly. Um, mm -hmm. He wasn't, you know, he had, because th then this is the, this is the area that I'm wondering in a lot, even, even, uh, even Mitch, even Mitch was wondering the same thing. Um, the, the KSDI, Mitch Powell, the KSDI historian, he was wondering the same thing. Like, so at this point, when he does split off, we know there's William Chow's influence, but we, if I understand you correctly, he wasn't, he was getting William Chow's blessing, but it wasn't like he was under William Chow, right? No. No, no, but he, what, what happened is Pro Professor Child told him that, you know, if he ever wanted to come and uh, train at his uh, school out of the YMCA, he said, come, if you want to teach, come. But he was just, Professor Child, like, took him under his wing because there was a separation from Godin, Professor Godin, from the College of Gamble system. So, you know, it was just out of respect for Professor Child because Professor Child was around when he was, training, you know, as a beginner and stuff. He knew of Professor Chow, but he, when he approached him and told him, I'm going to use, this is my situation. I'm not going to use Kaju Gamble as my self-defense system. I'm going to call it Kempo, okay? I'm going back to what Joe originally came from when he was under you. And Professor Chow said, no problem, man. Well, you know, so he, Godin was his own man. He wasn't really under anybody, you know? So, yeah. All right. Okay. That clears up a lot. So now we're in the seventies and Hackleman started, when did Hackleman start? 1970. He started a year before me. Okay, cool. So, right. Yeah. So now we're in the seventies and now we caught up to where 
we caught up to where Hackleman is, but as Hackleman told me, he said this on uh he said this on a live stream we did. And if anybody wants to know, hey, jump in the the pit Kajukimbo Ohana uh Facebook page. We I have conversations with John Hackleman yeah. every week and we just kind of talk about stuff. And he he casually mentioned that he really wasn't concerned about the history or, or anything. No, neither did neither did not, neither did not, neither did not. He said he was just he was we were, focused on the training. And even right. now, even now, he yeah. says, I'm, I, I've always been focused on the training. So I'm not the person to ask about what Godin did as far as where he got his stuff. Because whenever I, his, his quote, whenever I asked him, why are we doing this? What's this for him? He just told me to shut the fuck up and do it. When you're a black belt, you can do whatever you want. That's, that's his, that's his, that's Hackleman's comment about it. So now yeah. I'm asking you. So exactly. you did have, you did have pinion sets. They were different, which arguably a lot of, as time went by, a lot of the pinion later called Palama sets um, do look different across methods and schools. But you also mentioned the alphabets, which is interesting because um, some schools have them, some schools don't, depending on your background. Yeah, we, so didn't, we didn't have it. We, we, we didn't. We just had the Kempo Katas, the Tayokas, the, the pinions, the movement exercises. And uh, there was this thing, it was called Dance A. And that one I never learned. You know, when I got about like, Blue belt, they 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 got away from it. They 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 we, nobody nobody ever uh, did it anymore. It was just this one cut that was like a mixture of soft style and hard style. Yeah. And so yeah, but, yeah. I, but I, I didn't know it, but I heard of it. And you said that he started bringing in more more boxing, and Correct. and more full contact fighting. What did that look like in competition? Like, were you were were all of you guys competing? And okay, this is well, yeah, where, where were you guys competing at this point? What venues were you competing at? Okay, well, okay, in, in the, the first uh mixed martial arts tournament that they had here in Hawaii it was called the World Series of Martial Arts Tournament. A guy named Tommy Lee put it on, and that's when Benny Akitis and and uh his brothers, and there was a whole bunch of Hawaii guys that, that, that came down, and there was a guy named Dana Goodson who originally was from the mainland but came. Here in Hawaii and made it his home. Now Dana was a good point fighter up in uh, in the California area, but uh, he was he became a real good full contact fighter. So he competed in that first one, and it was down. It was it was like the early UFC. Okay, it didn't have weight divisions. You know, it was an elimination, and it got down to Benny and uh, and uh, Dana, and it ended up uh, um, Benny beat Dana by uh, a decision. Okay. So the, uh, there was, I think, one or two after that. I think it was like the second one. They, they, they had it again. And uh, Professor Godin, he had a guy named Victor Raposa from Wainai. You know, he, he didn't do too good in the point fighters, but he point fighting, but he was, he was a more rough and tumble guy. So they groomed him to fight in that full contact tournament. Now, that was uh, the... The fight gear. I'm not gonna get into the fight gear and stuff like that, but it was it was the old Jim Reed type, and it was stupid. But anyways, uh, uh, Victor ended up fighting in that one. Um, they had uh, Victor training down at uh, Wai'anae with, with the boxers down there, and Professor Goodin. That's when we started getting the uh, the influence of the full contact because Victor ended up knocking out. Uh, he beat this guy Chris Michael in the first round, uh, who was Dana Goodson's fighter. And then he ended up fighting uh, Everett Monster Man Eddie, uh, who beat this box of uh, Duke Sabadong. But um, uh, Everett Monster Man Eddie fought uh, fought under Benny's um, banner, and then Victor knocked him out. He became the World Series of Martial Arts heavyweight champion. And then later on, um, he started grooming Hackleman, who was John was young. I think he was about like the ninth grade or something. He started training down at Palolo. Uh, and there a guy named Peter June, and um, uh, we had two other fighters, Jonathan Vance and uh, Billy Takeuchi, who who were very good undefeated uh, uh, full contact fighters. And then we started training that way, and we he took us away from that old traditional style with the hands up. So when we'd go to tournaments, you know, we something, you know, there, there were certain guys that would win, but our our style was. Uh, Throwing a lot of hooks and, and, and uh, right crosses, and instead of just the, the regular, you know, uh, back knuckle jab, I was just straight, you know, boxing style jabs. And that's where the uh, the kickboxing influence came in through 
around that time, about 73, 74. And yeah. you mentioned you mentioned Palolo. Is that the Palolo boxing gym? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, because Hackleman talks a lot about there was a there was a point where Godin took him to the Palolo boxing gym, and that's where they started mixing mixing a lot of what would later become a lot of Hackleman's curriculum that he talks about. So yeah. So this is where this is where it's starting to happen. Now I'm starting to get a clearer picture of this. Um, so now they're doing full contact fighting. Right. When you say full contact fighting, they're pretty much doing MMA. You know, that's not. Oh, oh well, back then, yeah, yeah. They, you could you could do the wrestling takedowns and pin them, but there was no grappling allowed. Okay, oh, okay. You could kick inside and outside of the leg. There was uh, the the safety uh, the safety kick the the padding the styrofoam padding, and they had the 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 jewelry type gloves, and you could. Some some people you could use the elbow because they had the elbow pads and you could knee. But uh, as far as the grappling, the choking, no, there there was none of that. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it resembled more what what we would be called. Uh, I no think holes barred. I think, it's, I, think the it's, I think it's I think it's, the, I think it's the Chinese sanda where they allow takedowns, but they, there's no, no there's I, no there's no submissions. So that's it's pretty much kickboxing with takedowns. If if we were if I was to summarize the rules so that people can understand what it is. You're correct. Okay, cool, cool. So all right, so they're doing that. Hackleman starts um, being trained and getting ready to get into that. He gets right. into that. He gets into that. Yeah, Hackleman was he was like in high school and he started uh, doing that. And then later on, they took away when like the PKA had uh, the influence. You know, Tommy Lee ended up not doing his World Series of Martial Arts, so they started taking out these rules of the of the takedowns and the the outside leg kicks and the knees and the elbows and stuff. So the PKA was more like a, a Western boxing type rules, you know, the kick above the, the waist and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think the WKA was still allowing it, you know? Yeah. All right. So yeah. now at this point, we're getting closer to the eighties. And I know Hackleman mentioned to me that around the eighties is when the Kaja Kembo community brought Godin back in. So I'm wondering. No, he what, uh, go, bringing him back in. Like, what, what do you mean? I mean, because he never went anywhere. He was doing, he was still doing martial arts down here. No, 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 no. I'm talking about like the Kaja Kembo community, whatever happened, whatever split happened. Because right. uh, obviously, right, they're on the Kaja Kembo tree. Whatever split happened, there was a yeah. reconciliation period. And it, then, it could and, not be. And, it could have not been the Angelo. It could not been the eighties because Professor Gooding got incarcerated and he was released in eighty eight and eighty nine. He spent okay. Seven All right. So it wasn't the eighties. And this this is why <laughs> this is why you're here, man. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Right, right, so right, right, right. so I guess my question is, when was that? Honestly, that I can remember. More in or 2004, less. In, in two thousand four. Two thousand four. Okay. okay. John Hackleman. I. John Hackleman told me, hey, you know what, David? He gave me a call. He told me, uh, they're, uh, they're gonna, the KSDI at the Tropicana Hotel was gonna, um, give him, him an award of, uh, uh, instructor of the year. Chuck Liddell was gonna be fighter of the year, and they're gonna give Professor Godin, uh, an award, instructor of the year, posthum. What, 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 what's the word that after you die, they give you, after you pass away, they give you a, I don't, and, I, don't, I don't know. Just, just, just <laughs> fucking, or or something, but okay. somebody out there will fucking know. But right, anyway, so we keep okay. But but let me let me finish it. So that's is when I remember I was because I was kind of you know I was like hey you know what, John I'm going up there to support you because we we're, we're really proud of the the level that John took his Hawaiian Kempo. Okay, John went away from Chinese Kempo, made his Hawaiian Kempo, and we were the, the all the Kempo guys here in Hawaii we were really proud. I went up there to re represent, you know, Hawaii to, to support John. We went up there. John accepted the award. I, I believe if checking the checking the books too, because John, I believe he got promoted to ninth degree grandmaster too, you know, and uh, and with uh, CJ Adriano's signature and stuff. But that is when I believe they mentioned his name, and I was I was kind of confused. I was like, "Wow, man, I thought they." He wasn't in it anymore, but you know, all of a sudden he's back in. Why, you know, John mentioned it on your uh, your live stream, and you know, but that is is what I can't remember. Two thousand and four. 
All right. Now that, that's all. That, like I said, that's why you're here to clear up the, the times, the, these yeah. times and dates. Because John, even John says, I do not, I'm not a historian. I can tell you that this is well, this is about what. Well, you know, what, what I'm not a historian about. either. I'm going by my experience. Okay. What, yeah. Well, and I well, can I mean, tell you what, because at that time I had a magazine out called Fighting Arts Hawaii. Okay. You can see behind me, and it's that one at the end there that I was passing around at the the Tropicana. Yeah. All right. So. And at that point, Godin already passed away. Passed away in 2001. He was about uh, three yeah. years ago. Yeah. So this is after he passed away. All right. right. So and that, yeah. and that would be... And, at the, uh, and while all this is happening, mm -hmm. we're going to go back to Godin now. All this is happening. Um, John is in the mainland at this point, right? By the time he starts well, yeah. chuckling, he, he's he already stayed in the main, He stayed in the mainland after he was done with his uh, army enlistment. Okay. And then... And at Godin, what is going on at Godin's school? As, as he's getting older, who's running that school? Okay, he opened up a... See, that's one thing. He really loved training at the Palama, so Palama Settlement. And I think it was in 1992, 91 or 92, he opened up a uh, uh, Godin's uh, um, school of self defense at Palama. It's not the, the the original place where he trained at was it, the, that building was knocked down in the sixties, but it's it's like upstairs from the gymnasium. It's kind of off to the side, but you go upstairs, and he had mostly kids over there, and uh, he ran that school from the mid nineties all the way up to he died in two thousand one. He uh he would hold um. Annual tournaments are in July, you know, at Palama, and he would, you know, he would give some money back to a uh, uh, Palama settlement for uh, his tournaments that he got. So he was always giving back to Palama. He really loved his roots is really strong. That's what a lot of people don't understand about Professor Godin is that he was he really was a spiritual guy towards the end of his life. Though. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a pretty. Go ahead. Well, what, what I, I want to get into is, is the self-defense now. His, his, like you, you were mentioning the method, his, his philosophy, he had this whole thing, was, uh, it was the animal instinct, you know, that um, you, you're there to uh, not just survive, but the, 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 to the destroy, you know, the, the, the att your attacker, you know, and that, that's with, with the ground and the pound and the stomping and everything like that, and then, you know, don't worry about the consequences till later. You just, you, you just, the animal instinct to survive, you know, and that's that's what it is. The, the old bust them up, you know, like even in the uh, the self defense techniques that we would do. So we had this thing. It was called. Uh, it, it was a rotation self defense system. This guy George Vasoli, he called it the, the murder's row, where we'd have these guys. You all line up, and you have to stand in a line, and you rotate. The first guy does the self defense technique and just. Beats the living dog shit out of one guy, and then after that guy's done, he goes to the end, and he just keeps going, and ultimately till he gets to the back to the first guy who started the beatings, you know, he ends up getting his ass. So by the end of the class, you know, everybody got their ass kicked from the, you know, from that uh, that rotation murders rule, you know. But that's that's the kind of uh, self defense and philosophy that Godin had, or his method, whatever you want to call it. But he was always uh, he always had the prayer beginning at the end of class we always said it together nobody sometimes somebody would lead us but yeah he was always adamant about the prayer and the one more thing i want to i want to point out before you know people start saying things john hackleman was directly on the professor Goodian at the headquarters branch and at 404 pe coy right and uh i trained at another branch up in uh, the pacific palisades area okay it was the head instructor was a different guy, but we were still training under the Godin banner, the Godin method, the Godin system. That's my connection to Godin. And I still consider him my professor, my instructor, because I got to know him a little bit later on from mid the mid 90s all the way to his death. You know, he was he was something else. All right. Well, David, is there anything else you want to mention before we wrap this up? No. It's I hope that about uh, answers your questions. I, I think it did. I, I I think that's a very good clear timeline. 
of um of the Godin method, its development, and how it went through. And I really appreciate you taking the time to sharpen it <laughs> and get it done at the time constraints because I don't really go on forever, but I, I really wanted to go and get that done. So David, thank you so much for taking your time to explain that to me and my listeners. Um, for my listeners, thank you for following Social Jello with Angelo. Um, I usually say what Kaju Kimbo is now. If, you, if you've been sticking around this long, uh, do check out the What is Kaju Kimbo podcast um, on here. Or even if you want, you know, Google, if you don't know what Kaju Kimbo is and you're just wondering what we're talking about, uh, thank you for putting up with this conversation that you didn't know what was going on with it. <laughs> but I do recommend you Google Kaju Kimbo so you can learn more about it. And uh, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. And I'll catch you all next time. Thanks, brother. All right. All right, Angelo. Bye-bye.